Welcome to a lesson on lathe threading. For this work piece, we have created our geometry, set the stock in chuck jaws, face to Z0, roughed the profile, finished the profile, cut the grooves, roughing and finishing, all is part of the same operation. And finally, we have to cut the thread to complete this work piece. So this is the thread right here that we want to cut, and this is the threaded section right here. Uh, there's the engineering drawing that kind of describes that in greater detail. You notice there are some notes over here that we'll go over in just a moment. So let's first create a toolpath. We'll select a threading operation. Notice we didn't have to pick geometry. We set those limitations in the thread shape parameters. We have the major diameter, start position, and end position, which controls the geometry of the thread. Let's select a tool that resembles one that we have in our shop, a right-hand orientation threading tool. And I think I'm using tool number three in the turret of the shop. Of course, you want to be sure of this number before you input it. Always go to your machine first and take an inventory of all the tools in your turret or in your catalog or magazine. So for the feed rate, I'm going to switch from inches per minute to inches per revolution because I find it easier to verify the math of, of the feed rate later on. And notice that the speed is locked in as on an RPM and not cutting speed. So with the tool I've been using in the application I've been doing, 225 has been giving me a nice surface finish. And I think the reason that this is locked into RPM instead of cutting speed is that when you cut the thread to depth, um, you are changing the diameter that you're working at. And so in order to maintain synchronization between the feed rate and the spindle, um, it locks the RPM for constant instead of adjusting according to the diameter. So let's set the max spindle speed at 2000 RPM. Even though it's irrelevant in this case because we're locked at 225 RPM, I still like to get in the habit of doing that along with turning on the force tool change. We'll check to make sure coolant's on. And if you do forget to turn the coolant on, it's usually not a big deal because most CNC controllers have a button where you can just turn it on quickly if you forget it, but do make a habit of it. All right, in the comment section, I think it's important that you define what thread it is that you're cutting. UNC 2A. That provides a lot of information when you're writing, are reading your G-code, um, if you're trying to gather measuring instruments or whatever gauging, whatever it may be. Um, this is important information to know, so I do recommend just typing in the thread in the comment section, the specific one that we're cutting. So let's move over to thread shape parameters because we selected the tool, set the offset and tool numbers, set the spindle speed. Didn't really do anything with the feed rate because it's controlled within the thread shape parameters by the pitch. And then the max spindle speed is equal to 2000 RPM uh, for safety reasons. Force tool change to force the habit of it, of uh, setting the force tool change on. Comment describing the thread. So let's go to the thread shape parameters. And in here, we want to select from the table a 1 8 UNC 2A. So 1 inch major diameter, 8 threads per inch. And then UNC is the thread form, 2A is the class of fit. But we'll have to control that when we're cutting the thread. So notice here we have a major diameter of 0.25 doesn't match the one inch. We have a lead or a pitch, supposed to be pitch, of 20. We need eight. So instead of filling in those fields here, let's go to the table and let it do most of the work for us. Let's go UNC. I'll scroll down to 1.0 for major diameter, lead or pitch of eight. That's the thread I want, 1.8 UNC, 1.8 UNC. Green check mark. And notice it's changed the eight threads per inch. And take a look here. It's now influenced the feed rate. So 1 divided by 8, 1 inch over 8 threads per inch is equal to 0.125, where previously it was 1 inch divided by 20, and in here we had 0 0.05. So that's why this field is controlled with this number right here. Now one thing, uh, actually I'm going to hold off on changing anything here for a moment. Let's leave everything the way it is. So we, all we did was change the thread to 1-8 UNC 2A. So I'm going to, in this window right here, change the NC code format from CAN to longhand just to make sure that the code can be read easily by the computer that I'm using or the controller that I'm using. And then a little bit of advice I have here is setting your cut depths and your spring cuts. Now, eight threads per inch means that we have a fairly deep thread to cut. The fewer threads per inch means the deeper the single depth of thread. So in order to remove a lot of material for a threading operation, I want to do it in a lot of cuts. And if you've ever cut a thread on a conventional machine, you'll know that most of the difficulty comes from retracing your movement with every cut. So, um, you know, setting your uh, compound rest and your cross slide to the right positions every time before you begin and engaging the thread chasing dial at the appropriate time. 
that's where it's easy to make a mistake. Um, here, the machine does all that stuff automatically and it's very quick. So we can do a lot of cuts to preserve the tool. So instead of, you know, where if on the conventional machine, maybe I would try to achieve this thread in 20 cuts. Here we could do 30, we could do 35, just to make sure we give the tool an easy load. And then we want to treat that like the roughing. And then over here, we have the number of spring cuts, which means how many times the tool will retrace its final step and not engage into the material any further. And what this does is eliminates the cutter deflection. And I like to use a pretty high number of cuts here as well. I'll go with about five. And don't be surprised if you were to cut a thread like this to still hear cutting on the fourth spring cut, even though theoretically the tool is in the exact same X position. It's just getting rid of all that cutter deflection from this heavy threading cut. So all I did was change from can to longhand, increase the number of cuts to 35, and change the number of spring cuts from one to five. So let's hit the green check mark and see what that gives us. Already we have a few problems. So the start position looks good. Let's do a quick back plot first. There are a few obvious problems and a few other not so obvious problems. And probably the most obvious one being that the thread doesn't cut all the way through the threaded section according to what we're looking for in this engineering drawing. So what we need to do is not worry about the start position of the thread, but the end position of the thread. And what I like to see is for the thread or the threading tool to end somewhere in this groove. I, it has to be, or we have to be careful to make sure it doesn't run into that shoulder. And since this groove is fairly wide, I'm just going to select the middle of the groove. So to know exactly that distance, I'm going to go to analyze distance from the front face to the midpoint of that line. We have 1.5. So let's go into the parameters thread shape parameters and the end position and notice with these positions here the start is z0 and the end position is z negative 1.5 or sorry 1.0 that's why it's not going all the way through the part so I'll change it to 1.5 and let's see what change this makes there we have it we have the same thread shape but now it extends through that part and then just as a quick note for good engineering practice and manufacturing practice it's nice to see that single depth of thread not go as deep as the chamfer size. You want that chamfer a little bit bigger than your single depth of thread to ensure that you get a good perf uh, performance, good deburring, good fit and finish out of this thread. <clears throat> Pardon me. So then we have some other issues that are less obvious. So the overall geometry looks okay, but let's take a look at a few things here. Notice that the tip of that tool path is actually above the part geometry. So if we analyze this diameter, we have 0.99, not 1.0. So let's take a look at these notes. I've got a note here to say search online for the online thread calculator. Use the link to the theoretical machinist website. So let's do that now. First link that comes up, this is the site that you want to see. So let's input the numbers for our thread from this definition menu. 1-8 UNC right here. Oh, I double clicked and hit compute already. So we have basic diameter of 1, 8 threads per inch. The designation is UNC class 2A, and it's a single start thread. I did hit compute, and take a look over here. The major diameter for this thread is 0.983 to 0.988. So what that means is the diameter that we have created here with our finishing operation actually has to be below 1.0. So a good draftsman or draft person will draw that size below or with the actual size for the thread callout or within the major diameter tolerance range. So I've got that ex explained in the notes here. Always draw the major diameter in the middle of the tolerance, not at the callout. In this case, 1-8 UNC2A has a major diameter tolerance range of 0.983 to 0.988. We can double check that here. 0.983 as the lower limit to 0.998. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. 998. This example has been drawn at 0 0.990, as we have proven right here. 0 0.990. And then the minor diameter information in Mastercam parameters is often wrong by default. So let's take a look at what that's telling us. If we take a look at the thread calculator, we'll notice the minor diameter limitations, if we round them, are 0.821 to 0.849. So let's go into the parameters. We have a minor diameter given to us by Mastercam of 0.864.
So if we go back here to the thread calculator, our upper limit is 0.849, and my recommendation would be to fall somewhere in between these limits. So we have a range of about 18 thou, and that means I want to add 9 thou, about 830, 0.830. Oh, sorry, that's not true. It's 29 thou. So f a 14 and a half thou difference on top of 821 is 0.8355. So I want 0.8355 as the middle of my tolerance for the minor diameter. And we have 0.864. That's almost 30 thou oversized. So I'm going to go ahead and change that now. And you have to be careful to make sure that you double check that every single time because it stands to reason that it will affect the performance of your workpiece. So by accurately reflecting these numbers in here, you make sure that you'll actually get a good thread when you cut your workpiece, and it's really essential that you check that every time. It's not an obvious mistake if you're just beginning, but it's one that will throw you off and be difficult to diagnose if you don't know what to look for. So let's take a look at that now. Now you can see the crest of that thread form is now in line at the top of the workpiece because I've edited the major diameter the minor diameter is now going a little deeper than before, although that may be difficult to determine right now. And that looks much better. I'm going to do a quick look over here to make sure we've covered everything. Uh, we've selected the tool, assigned speeds, feeds, uh, given a comment. We have the right pitch. We have the right major diameter. We have the right minor diameter. We have the right start position, the right end position. And just note that if your thread was on this section right here, your start position would be somewhere in the Z negative, maybe Z minus 1.5 for your start position, and then your end position would be somewhere in the middle of this groove right here. So you would be have both of these numbers in the negative because all of your geometry is in Z negative. And then if we go to the thread cut parameters, I went from canned to longhand to make sure my controller can read the code. Um, I changed the number of cuts from 5 to 35 to make sure we're not working our tool too hard. And then I gave five spring cuts to make sure that we have no cutter deflection and we get an accurate uh, response to tool compensation at the controller. And that's really all you have to do to modify the parameters to get a good unified national thread in MasterCam. Thank you.